All right, here we go. So we're going to talk today a little bit about how to parse the binary trees. And uh, the last time we were together, we had started building a binary tree class. Today, I'm going to jury rig one quickly. Uh, we had discussed last time the idea of creating one class inside the other and creating a tree node. I'm going to just do that quickly here today. So we're going to go private static class uh, tree node. And I think we, we were last time we were together, we had discussed uh, talking about making this a generic so we could store any kind of information here. And I am going to do that later today, but just to start off a little bit easier, I'm going to use a character data for our tree. And we're going to construct the tree that is uh, this tree. We're going to construct this tree right here. And then we're going to parse this tree four different ways. We're going to parse it pre order, post order, in order, and level order. So we're going to parse this tree four different ways. Now, ideally, we'd like to have the tree class built up so that we can use some fancy insert or add methods to create all these nodes. We don't really have that. So we're going to just jury rig this tree by hard coding it for now. We just want to get the tree created so we can parse it. The lesson today is not to create the tree. The lesson is to parse the tree. So we're just going to cobble together this tree as quickly as we can. So to do that, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to eventually have generics representing the data type for our tree nodes. But for today, we're just going to set it up for to be character data. So over here uh, in my uh, tree node class, I'm going to have character C, and then I'm going to have tree node left and tree node right. And this represents the pointers to the children potentially in the binary tree. If I don't have a child, then the corresponding pointer will be set to null. Let's throw together a constructor, public tree node. And that's my little constructor. Uh, these two statements aren't really necessary because if I don't go and explicitly set the pointers to null, the Java virtual machine will do it for me. But it's a really good habit to get into to tell your reader what's going on in the constructor. And so we're going to take the character that is given to us and we're going to put a box around it called a tree node. And we're going to store this as our data field. And we're going to at least initially set up our pointers to be null. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cobble together that tree, uh, once again, this tree right here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create all the nodes and then I'm going to link the nodes appropriately. So you can see the nodes are named from A through I, I guess, is the last one. So let's create all those tree nodes first. And I forgot to do this the last time we put together this, uh, this tree node class. We need a two string also. So let's just put one in. And all we have to do here is take the character data and convert it into a string. And the easiest way to do that is to call the two string method on it. You'll notice if I don't have this two string here and just try to return the character, I'll get an error message because characters do not default to strings. So I have to turn it into a string here. There are other ways to convert characters to strings. Yes, that will also work. Uh, I'm going to use the two string here. And the reason I'm going to use it here, Ben, is that eventually we are going to convert this into a generic. And therefore, the two string will work better for the generic. So we're going to leave it like this for now. OK? All right. So I've created the A node. And now I'm going to ask you to create all the other nodes. OK, I've created all these nodes that I need. Let me just hit the compile, make sure everything's OK. All right, now I want to cobble my tree together. So once again, looking at this tree, uh, you can see that the root is going to be at F. So I'm going to need a root marker. So let me create one more variable. So now I've set up my root. And now you can see here that the left child should be B and the right child should be G. So see if you can figure out how to code that down here. Notice, by the way, that these are not marked private because this is an inner class. So no one else can touch this data. So I can manipulate it directly. So you don't need getters and setters for these pointers. You can manipulate them directly here. Mr. Nikita, can you tell me, sir, how do I set F's left child to be B? OK, you go ahead now and you finish building that tree for me. 
if we had an actual binary tree class, we would never need to resort to this sort of ugliness. But for today, because we're learning to parse before we learn to build the tree class, we've just decided to hard code our tree. So now I'm going to put together a little bit of test code to help us parse our tree. And I'm just going to ask you to copy this verbatim, and we'll talk about it in a second. So what I've done here is we're going to create these four methods today. Uh, this one's going to create a, a pre-order traversal of the tree and print it. This one's going to print a post order, an in order, and a level order. Those are the four that we're working on. I'm going to show you this one, and then I'd like you to build the other two. And then we're going to go back and fill, fill, fill in this one later. This one's a little bit unusual because we're going to need a queue to help us do this one. But first, let's look at this pre-order. <clears throat> let's go back and look at this tree. And you can see we're going to be given this root node. And what we want to do is we want to visit this tree in a pre-order stance. And what we want to do is every time we're at a node, we want to print it if we haven't visited it already. And then here is the entire insight into doing a pre-order. First of all, I think I mentioned to you that a tree is inherently a recursive data structure. So if you looked at this F node, for example, you can look at this tree as two subtrees. You can look at this part right here as one subtree. That's the one that starts at the left child. And then you can see this other part over here that's going to be the right subtree. That is the starts with the right uh, child of F. And likewise, if you look at B, you can look at A as a subtree, and then you can look at these three nodes as a subtree. And so what's happening here is that as we go down to each node, what we have to do is simply print the left subtree and then print the right subtree. Now, this turns out to be remarkably efficient in code. And let's have a quick look at what that looks like. And so we're going to go over here and we're going to write this pre order method first. So I'm going to turn off the comments and turn it into live code now. And we're going to come up here and we're going to write this method. And uh, we're going to use a static indicator here so that we don't have to create any other classes or objects. And we're going to do pre order. And what I want to know is should we have any parameters here? And what should they be? So we're going to need a node here, and we're going to, it's going to be a tree node. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to print the current node that we're at. So first thing we want to do is we want to go system out print. Notice I'm doing print and not print ln, because if you're printing a large tree, it's going to run off the page. I'd rather just print all the nodes on one line. So I'm going to use print here instead of print ln, and I'm just going to print the current one. And if you're wondering what that means, I'm basically calling the two string on the tree node here, which in return just prints the character data that's inside the node. So now what I want to do is I want to call the pre order on the left child and the pre order on the right child. But there's one little problem. See if you and your partner can discover what the problem is. We have to check for nulls because we can't really depend on there being children here. So we're just going to check for the nulls. And believe it or not, that is all the code that we need to do pre-order traversing of a tree, no matter how big it is. So we're going to run this puppy now. And you'll see that this tree will print out, uh, print out over here, F, B, A. D C E G H uh, G I H looks perfect. See that? So hopefully you find that pretty remarkable and you can see why people like to work with trees. Just write a little bit of code. You can do a lot. And uh, what I'd like you to do now is get together with a partner and see if you can figure out how to write the methods for in, uh, post order and in order. Write the post order first, then write the in order. I'll give you a hint. It looks a lot like this. In fact, I would probably copy and paste these as getting started uh, vehicles for the two methods that I've asked for. So I want you to do this, uh, uh, this post order for me and this in order for me. Please take a few minutes to do that now. OK, uh, does anyone have it? Look, here's the post. Here's the pre-order. Here's the pre-order, right? 
And we're going to start off with the post order, same thing. It's going to be extremely similar. Yes, sir. You change two things. First, you move the print statement to the bottom. And also, you need to change these calls to be post order now because you're in the post order recursive method. And we're going to run this now and see both the pre order and the post order side by side. So let's run it. So now we have the pre order and the post. Let's look at the, the graph. So let's see, the post should be A, C, E, D, B, H, I, G. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay. Now you do the in order one, the in order one. Mr. Nikita, how do I do the in order, sir? Now, in, in addition to moving this print statement, make sure you change the method calls to in order here. Let's uncomment the in order now. Here's the graph. And looking at the in order, it should be A first, and then B, and then C, then D, then E, then G, then H, then I. Very nice. Okay. So you can see that that is the, the technique for parsing pre-order, post-order, and in-order.